What's up everyone, Gourmet here. Today, I am bringing you guys what is basically a breakdown on the rules and your tactics. No, I'm not talking about the rules to eat. No, I'm not talking about the rules that make me look like the Michelin Man. I am talking about the rules that can help you win games depending on what type of tactic and formation you are using because each tactic and formation can require specific rules to be played by players to make sure that you get the edge on your opponent. Now, before we get into today's video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do enjoy. I am also streaming over on Twitch, so I'll be linking my Twitch down below. You can check me out at twitch.tv slash whygourmet. Currently doing a stream over there with Dinamo Moscow that I will be kind of going over the rules with today. Um, having a lot of fun. We won the league this previous season, so having a lot of fun currently with it. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So like I said, each formation, each tactic that you guys run will require different roles to be played, especially if you are trying to play a certain way. Now, the way that this is set up, I like playing very attacking with the 4-2-3-1. Absolutely love this formation, love this tactic. It allowed me to have one of the top offenses in the league the previous year. And once again this year, but we're not scoring goals like we were the previous year. But that's besides the point. So, if you want to play an attacking play style, you need more attacking roles being used. If you want to play a defensive playing style, you need more defensive style being used more defensive roles like uh, defensive midfielder if you want a fullback instead of a wingback a no-nonsense defender instead of a ball playing defender kind of along those lines if you want a well-balanced type uh, tactic slash formation you want to have well-balanced roles to where maybe with your center backs you want to be able to have them play as central defenders to where they can defend and be comfortable with the ball, you may want a complete wing back to where they are very good defensively and very good offensively as well. Uh, winger wise, instead of doing inverted wingers, you may want an inside forward or a winger in that case. Uh, but we're going to be breaking all that down today. Going to go as in depth as I possibly can with it. I'm going to try and keep this video to 20 minutes at minimum and try and break it down as quick as possible as I can, but as thorough as possible as I can be. So. First thing is first, where all the goals come from, well, at least a majority of them, your striker. Now, there are the roles of deep line forward, advanced forward, target man, poacher, complete forward, pressing forward, trekkerista, and false nine. Now, I do have two favorites out of these, and one that I would like to use in the future, it's just I need one hell of a striker to be able to use it. Now, each one will either have support, attack, or defend over here for whether you want them to play more of a defensive role, obviously, supportive role, or attacking role. Now, with a deep line forward, it has support or attack. When in attack, they are trying to create chances more for himself while, all the, while also involving his teammates, but focusing more on himself compared to support where he is focusing almost solely on his teammates and almost kind of plays as a deep line playmaker at times because a deep line forward will tend to play more so in this area sometimes on support than up in this area when they would be on attack now with advanced forward it's solely attack balls to the wall trying to get the ball in the net absolutely love an advanced forward but what i love more than an advanced forward honestly is a pressing forward which I believe is the only attacking role. Yep, only attacking role that has defense, support, and attack for your striker. Now, currently, I run a pressing forward on attack with my striker. Now, if you want him on attack, obviously, he's going to be very, very up the field. He wants to look to score, but he also is looking to pass the ball off. Go in to the channels and try and make as many plays as possible while also pressing the defense as well. When he is on support, did not mean to click that, I meant to hover over it. Uh, when they are on support, they want it more to where they are taking more risks to getting the ball to their teammates, trying to make plays. 
So if you are using a be more expressive creative freedom with your in possession uh, portion of your tactics, a pressing forward on support probably would be pretty good. It's just it would be more risky for sure. But when a pressing forward is on defend, they look to bring in everyone into the game before they even think about themselves. So that is when you would really want to have very good wingers or a very good midfield in general or at least just another good striker with your pressing forward on defend to where you can make sure that you're going to get as many goals as possible because they will look to be a big distributor for you. Um, now, complete forward-wise, this is the elite of the elite for strikers. So it's it's very difficult to have a complete forward, especially because some of them it'll say, oh, they can play it, but can they really? Because when you look at e even just a complete forward on... Uh, on support. Let me get into Chalov. It is lagging, so that's awesome. Uh, let's get into Chalov here. We're going to go to complete forward on support. So you need them to basically be good at everything. You want them good at dribbling, finishing, first touch, heading, long shots, passing, technique. I mean, the one striker that comes to mind when I think of all of that is Harry Kane. So he is probably the best at being a complete forward. And second best to him, I would say, is Erling Haaland. But even Erling Haaland wouldn't really match what Harry Kane would be able to do in this type of role. Uh, which, quick little tip, the green, super important, blue, secondary. So, yes, the blue is still important, but not as important as the green is. So keep that in mind when you are going over your roles. Now, a trick, I think it's actually pronounced trek Ortista. So, my bad for butchering that earlier. Uh, but they are using your uh, the rest of the team to basically make up for his defensive liability. Uh, because he is going to be attacking as much as possible. A false nine is like a messy type role. He used to play it uh, with uh, when it was Neymar, Messi, and Suarez at Barcelona. He's a very, very good player doing it. Uh, so if, if you can make a false nine work, definitely do it because it is kind of underrated in, uh, my opinion, but pressing forward on attack, in my opinion, one of the best up front. And then obviously you have got the target man and poacher, which is literally just players that are either really good and older like Zlatan where they're lacking pace now. And that is kind of their elite type roles or just players that can literally do nothing but score. So keep that in mind. If you have someone that can literally do nothing but score, you probably want them being a poacher. Uh, now, going to an attacking midfield area. Attacking midfielder, I really like. I ran with an attacking midfielder. Season 1 with Dinamo, it was very, very solid. I switched to a shadow striker, though, just because I feel that they are um, a, a little... Th there's more freedom to it and there there definitely definitely is more freedom to a shadow striker than an attacking midfielder because the attacking midfielder still feels he has somewhat of a duty to you know help his team defend uh, now an advanced playmaker absolutely phenomenal but i would still use a shadow striker over advanced playmaker i would really use a shadow striker over all of these and ganche is definitely unique uh, they're very, very stationary, so they they tend to literally stay in this area, and that is their only job. Uh, but once again, Trek Ortiz is kind of going to play like how they would up front as your striker. Uh, but a shadow striker, I think, is one of the most OP roles in FM21. So if you have not tried out a shadow striker, I definitely recommend you to do so. Um, now we move out to the wings. You've got winger, advanced playmaker, inside forwarder, trek ward, tista, wide target man, rom doiter, and inverted winger. My favorite is the inverted winger, either on support or attack. Support, obviously, exactly what it says. They support. They are there to support the attack, but they still are an outlet if need be. But when they are on attack, they're 
still there to support the attack, but are more so of a, okay, they're definitely an option, so it's definitely going to cause some chaos for your opponent. Now, a Rom Deuter, it's it's a very interesting role because they, like it says, he is difficult for defenders to pick up as he will often drift from his assigned position looking for any opportunity to exploit. So they are the player that when it says moves into channels, they're going to be moving everywhere for any possibility to get in and get a goal for you. So if you need a player like that, definitely go for Rom Deuter, which honestly, looking at it, I might try out Rom Deuter in the future for sure. But a wide target man, kind of, I want to say it's like a Beckham roll, but it kind of is, it kind of isn't. They're, they're out wide. They're a big time playmaker. They can get you goals, but they are really good for ball possession. Trek Wartista, same thing, really, as the uh, central attacking type role and the striker role. It's just they're out wide now. Inside forward, I, I liked using inside forward. I used inside forward season one, but once I switched to two inverted wingers, I absolutely loved it. I feel that I didn't have the right players for an inside forward, so you may need to have an inside forward type player that is like elite at it one player two players actually that i think would be elite at it and i mean they're elite in their own is sadio mane Mohamed salah maybe even human son would be very good inside forwards although i did a test and Mohamed salah as an inverted winger did better than Mohamed salah as a inside forward so inverted winger i definitely feel is the op winger option but inside forward, also a very good option. Advanced playmaker is an advanced playmaker out wide, obviously looking to make the plays. He wants to be able to focus all of his play to his teammates. And then a winger kind of encompasses everything and kind of takes everything into one. Although I wouldn't say it really takes in the Ron Deuter role, really. Uh, you kind of have to put on the player instructions for it to do so. Um but now moving into the central midfield, which honestly, these are some of my favorite roles. So we've got a central midfielder, deep line playmaker, box to box midfielder, advanced playmaker, ball winning midfielder, roaming playmaker, Mazala and Carlero. Now, I'm going to say it immediately. Mazala is the most OP role I have ever used in any football manager. Mazala on attack specifically because I did not realize how good it was going to make the player that I had playing that role because I originally had the player that's playing the role currently, Arsene Zakarian, playing as my shadow striker. And I'm like, you know what? I'm bringing in this Luka Lukinic kid. I want to try and, you know, play him lower. Let's see how he does as a Mazala on attack. It changed everything. Mazala on attack, I highly recommend to everyone to at least, if you're running a 4-4-2, anything that has two midfielders set up next to each other, run one as a Mazala on attack. If not, trying both. That I'm going to try both, probably. Streaming on Monday, see how that works out. But, I mean, Mazala on attack, very, very good. I mean, very, very good. Now, Carlero, they like to stay wide. It's kind of like having another wing back in some sense, I would say. Uh, but I would definitely recommend Mazala over Carlero. Uh, roaming playmaker does exactly what it says. They roam and make plays. Ball winning midfielder, it's another version of a defensive midfielder, just a little bit further up. Uh an advanced playmaker, same thing as the other roles. It's just very, very central. Uh, box-to-box midfielder, I really like having. And the, the thing about box-to-box midfielder, it's, it's a very aggressive role, I would say. I mean, in my opinion, it's an aggressive role. Um, and certain players definitely fit it better than others, but... 
the player that I usually use there is a stud at it. And I would I would say like the most elite player that could be a box to box midfielder. Because I, I run Moro here. The most elite player as a box to box midfielder. Let me pull it up really quickly. So you guys see what it requires to be a box to box midfielder. I think the most elite player as a box to box midfielder would be Paul Pogba. I really do. Because it requires dribbling, finishing, first touch, long shots, passing, tackling, technique. You got to be good at all aspects of the game, and you got to require some pace as well and some strength. It like you got to require a little bit of everything and be able to attack and defend. And I think that Paul Pogba kind of fits that perfectly. And I mean, especially with like a long shot role. Another player would be like Raja Nangalan. Um, I, I think that he would be very, very good. Um, now, with the defensive midfield options, you still got a deep line playmaker, which you can also play in the central area, which I forgot to go over. Uh, now, defense midfielder, absolutely love. It does exactly what it says. They're a defensive midfielder. Uh, they can either be on defend or support, so support, they'll kind of get up there and try and Get some goals for you, make some plays, but I really like a defense midfielder on defend. Uh, deep line playmaker on defend I really like compared to support because uh, I did run a deep line playmaker for the first two seasons. But once I switched to Mazzal on attack because I had my deep line playmaker on the left side, once I switched to Mazzal on attack, it changed my whole world. Uh, ball winning midfielder, already went over that. An anchor man, very interesting. It's like having another center back. Uh, but I mean, if you can have, I would say Fabinho is a very, very good player at being an anchorman. Same with being a halfback. Both are, they're kind of along the same lines, but a halfback would be way more of a center back in my opinion than an anchorman would be because N'Golo Conte can play an anchorman type role. Whereas Fabinho can play an anchorman type role, but would be better suited to a halfback type role, I would say. A Regista, they are a very creative defensive midfielder, and they tend to push up like you see here in the picture. Uh, they, they tend to push up past midfield, but they want to kind of be there as an outlet to try and switch the play to the other side of the field. So if your left winger doesn't have anything open for themselves, they're going to switch it over to the right side. Uh, Roaming Playmaker already went over that. Let me get Moro back in his spot. And I meant to go over central midfielder. That's what I forgot. You literally get to make a position yourself. So you go into instructions because you choose a central midfielder. They don't have anything. You basically get to custom make it. So if you want them to get further forward, roam from the position, shoot more often, you basically make yourself a box-to-box -box midfielder. But if you want to mark tighter and tackle harder, that's a very defensive box-to-box -box midfielder. So you kind of get to make your own role with them. Uh, now, wing back and fullback wise. You've got a fullback, wingback, no nonsense fullback, complete wingback, and inverted wingback. I have heard, I have not used it, I have been very tempted to use it. The inverted wingback I have heard is insane. Um, now, they are wingbacks that are inverted. It's like having an inverted winger. They cut in, they get more involved in the play, they go more towards the midfield. Uh, now, a complete wingback... Like I mentioned earlier, best of both worlds. Good at attacking, good at defending. If you can have a very good complete wingback, props to you. Uh, No-nonsense fullback is a fullback that is horrible with the ball, and they don't want it. Like They just don't want it. They're really good at defending, but they just don't want the ball. Uh, wingback is the offensive version, but like you see, like no-nonsense fullback, fully defend. Wingback, defend, support, attack. Or automatic, whichever one the player prefers. Uh, complete wingback, support, attack, inverted wingback, same as the wingback. And then fullback, same thing as the wingback. But the difference between a wingback and a fullback. Fullback is 
also kind of best of both worlds, but I would prefer a, comp a complete wing back over a fullback. Because a complete wing back, I feel, is better at playmaking than a fullback would be, whereas the fullback is better at the defensive aspects, but is still pretty good offensively. But a wing back is one of my favorite roles. I did not think I would like a wing back because I used to, I mean, I still am a FIFA person, but everyone always used fullbacks. Everyone was afraid to use a wing back. And this game has made me very comfortable with wing backs. I absolutely love it. It it really transforms the play because the way I like my wing backs to play, they run wide with the ball, they get further forward, and then they cross the ball in to center. So basically, with my inverted wingers, they invert. They're going to come in, and it's going to be like three strikers somewhat at some times. Whereas Krugavoy, my left back, Meredith Philly, my right back, they're wing backs. They're going to fly up the pitch and look to get across, get a pass in. It's like Lukanich, Moro, Zakarian, because everyone pushes up. Kilman and Trent Rigger are basically the only guys back. It, it's pure chaos for your opposition. Pure chaos. Having a wing back, that is. It, it creates a lot of chaos. Now, defensively, you've got three options. It's pretty straightforward. You've got a central defender which is defend, stopper, cover, ball playing defender, same thing, no-nonsense center back, same thing. Now, no-nonsense center back, they don't want the ball, they're horrible with it, they want to get the ball away, if anything, they're going to clear the ball. They are strictly there to defend. So if you're in the lower leagues, no-nonsense center back, it's probably what you're going to want to run. Ball playing defender is the elite of the elite. Van Dijk is phenomenal as a ball playing defender. Honestly, one player that I think is highly underrated is Jordan Trenariga. He is a very, very good ball playing defender. I absolutely love him. And then you have got the central defender, which is best of both worlds. They can make plays and defend. Now, when you have defend on, obviously going to defend. When you have stopper on, they're going to try and stop the opposition at all co at yeah at all costs. At all costs. And what they won't really do is go up in the play for real. Whereas defend, they, they are willing to go up in the play a little bit. Now, cover, they are kind of... I would say cover is best used in a three center back scenario. But you definitely can use it with two and two wing backs, full backs, whichever one you're going to be using. Uh, it is more so they are going to intercept the ball. They pinch up a little bit, taking a little bit of a risk, and then they play it off to a very good playmaking player. That, that's kind of what the cover does. And then last but not least, you've got the goalkeeper. You've got a sweeper keeper, and you've got a goalkeeper. So it's either you've got a normal goalkeeper or a Manuel Neuer. And a lot of people like using a Manuel Neuer. I am one of those people because it allows my goalkeeper to, once again, create chaos. Sweeper keeper creates chaos, goalkeeper does his job. So, once again, if you're in lower leagues, go for a goalkeeper. But as you are progressing through the leagues, definitely try to implement a sweeper keeper into your style because it will definitely create a few chances a season for you that could end up being vital. Because in my first season, my goalkeeper had four assists. And I did not expect that whatsoever. Uh, but I believe that is everything covered to the best of my ability. If you guys want me to cover anything else, let me know. I'm going to be doing more of these, like I said in the previous one with the elite uh, corner set piece. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this type of stuff. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I know I went a little bit over 20 minutes. I think it was 21 minutes of explaining all that. So sorry I hit 21 minutes. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below what roles you guys like the best. Whether you are on board with the Mazala or you think that a central midfielder with custom uh, instructions is better than a Mazala. Uh, if you like a inside forward compared to an inverted winger. If you like the wide playmaker, definitely let me know if you like that. Um, complete wing back, wing back, full back. 
which one out of those three do you prefer and what do you prefer defensively and attacking wise let me know in the comments down below which roles you prefer what you like rocking i'm very very interested to see what you guys like using but that is going to be it for today's video so i hope you guys did enjoy and also i'm going to be linking my discord down below along with my twitch and everything else and my socials so if you guys want to check any of that out please feel free to do so i'm very active over on my twitter and in the discord which i post the tactics in the discord before i post the video so the day before i post the video i put the tactic in there so you guys can get kind of get a little quick run through of what is going to be coming out and give it a try yourselves so if you guys are interested in that definitely check it out but yeah finally gonna let you go but yeah thank you for tuning in really appreciate it see you guys in the next one Bye bye